Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. We've been dying to give y'all a garden tour for a while. We was waiting on things to really start growing. So y'all come along with us. Me and my husband live on about 18 acres in the foothills of North Carolina. We grow about 80 to 90% of our own food and we're gonna show you how we do it here with, with our garden tour. So this may get a little long, but I hope y'all enjoy it. Just a few potted up stuff right here at the house. We've got, you know, this tomato here, and well, that, we didn't actually plant that. It come up on its own. It comes up every year. Yes, a potato. Well, I thought we dug all the potatoes out of it last year, but apparently we didn't. But we've got random strawberry plants and stuff planted around the house. Now, I'm going to show y'all this because I'm real proud of this right here. I think it makes my porch. <laughs> this is a uh, mullein, and I dug a little tiny plant out of my daddy's yard back in the spring, and it's so pretty. I just love it. And if you don't know, mullein has a ton of health benefits. Uh, respiratory health and different things like that, but that's not what this video is about. So, there's another mullein plant, and there's another mullein plant. So, stepping away from our backyard or from our back porch, um, we have what we call our main garden, which is right here within just a few feet of our back door. So, man, this corn has really come out just since yesterday. It's great. It's starting to tassel. But this is popcorn here. This is Japanese hullest popcorn, which is an heirloom variety. And I'd been planting a, a hybrid variety, but I wanted something I could save the seeds from. So I planted this. It's the first year I've ever grown the Japanese hullest. So kind of excited about trying that. But it's looking good. Then we have the sunflowers here. We have one starting to bloom. These are all volunteer sunflowers that we dug up and moved to this spot. But they're kind of helping shade out of our shade out our cabbage heads here. Where cabbage is a cooler weather plant or cool season plant, um, we thought it might be a good idea to kind of block the sun off of them and it doesn't seem to affect them as far as not getting enough sun either. I mean, look at that. That's these a, are actually some of the prettiest cabbage I think we've ever grown. This is a nice plant. And these have had absolutely no fertilizer at all put on them. Nothing but what we've amended the soil with here, which is really just leaves that we've dumped in this garden spot here. And, you know, they've broke down over time. This one did have quite a bit of bug pressure on it, which we've, it starts getting pretty bad this time of year when it starts getting hot. But once you get on out here to this end of the garden, things start getting a little bit shorter. And that's because of the shade from this tree right here, I think. I believe that's what's causing it. Um, so we're hoping maybe this winter when we don't have any garden or anything growing, maybe we can do something with that tree. Now, my plans with all this cabbage, because Andy doesn't really eat cabbage. I like cooked cabbage pretty good. Uh, but I had a viewer suggest doing canned coleslaw. And thank you to whoever that was that told me that. I can't remember your name. I'm sorry. But I'm planning on trying to make some of that. So I'm definitely going to do a video about that soon. Um, but I, I love slaw. And I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. So I do appreciate the suggestion. And I can't say that we've ever had tomato plants look like this. I mean not bragging or anything but we've always had some rather nice tomato plants but my goodness these are kicking <laughs> and, I, and we that we were worried they were just all going to be plants but we've got plenty of blooms on a lot of them and look under here at the stalks and these things are massive but they they didn't start blooming until they got on up in height. Like, so like the blooms don't start to right in here. and All this new growth's got quite a bit of blooms on it. So I haven't seen any new tomatoes on them yet. Um, but we did. Right here's a tomato. That's the first one I've saw. But they're full of blooms. So, I mean, when these things start putting off tomatoes, golly. Somebody's going to have their work cut out for them. But we did have somebody say that they were crowded. They thought they looked crowded. And I think they look crowded now. But I promise y'all, when we planted these tomatoes, I was sure that I had them plenty of feet apart and, and row spacing was plenty enough apart. But gosh, they've just bushed out well, so much. 
I'm going to give you an example. So in between each T post that you see, there's only two or three plants between each T post. Yep. So, I mean, if that gives you any concept of how far apart we did plant these. And I planted as far as row spacing goes, we planted these farther apart than we've ever planted tomatoes before because last year our tomatoes sort of started coming in on each other like they've done now. But we had like a tomato tunnel. We'd have to get down on our hands and knees and crawl between the rows to get to pick our tomatoes. So, um, anyways, this is unreal. I mean, how many are here? Like a hundred? Was it right at a hundred? Yes. Yeah, I, mean, like I think it was actually ninety that we planted right here. And most of them are Mountain Pride tomatoes, and there's a couple of celebrities. But I think that's the only ones we have planted in this in these three rows. On this side. We have the cucumbers. Y'all seen us trellis up here a while back in a couple of videos. And if you missed that video, I'll be sure to link it in the description if y'all want to check us out making this trellis here. And like I said in the video, you do have to get up here and sort of train them to it. But once they get started on it. Well, just like this one over here. Yeah. Yeah. That once one. they get started on it, that's uh, no problem at all. They take care of themselves. Most of these are pickling variety cucumbers. There's some market more cucumbers here too. It ain't going to stay. Boy, this potato plant here's got the potato bugs all over it. This one was a volunteer that come up and it's one. It's part of the same ones that we dug up and put in our raised beds, which you'll see here shortly. But um, this one came up really late. Otherwise, we would have dug it up and put it in with the sweet potato stuff. I mean, <laughs> In with the raised beds too. I don't know why I'm thinking about sweet potatoes. All right. So down through here, we have our October beans or our, our tapazio beans. And a couple of places where the beans didn't come up like they should have, I stuck a tomato plant in, which now everything started growing and the tomatoes are sort of getting crowded out. But I'm sure they'll still do something. Then we had a random cucumber come up right here. So I put him a little tomato cage there for him to climb. If you're not familiar with tapazio beans, we do get these from Hoss Tools. They are some of our absolute favorites. If you've ever had leftover pintos, that's exactly what they remind me of. They are so good. Man, I'll tell you, when things start coming in, it's gonna come all it come in at once. Well, it it, always every goes. bit of it is. <laughs> so here's our uh, indeterminate brandywine tomatoes that we made the video on trellis, trellising up, and I, I'm pretty sure they've grown just since we shot that video the other yeah. day. They're growing like crazy. We actually need to get out here and tie them up a little better. And this trellis, if you did miss that video, this is some bamboo that grows down the road from us here. And we just went and cut us some, and we were just, it's an experiment, and it looks cute too. Then these out here, we're not sure what kind of tomatoes these are. These are some that got started from seed and everything got messed up in them. And so now we don't know what, what variety they are. All right, so over here is our is a little raised bed that we've got fixed and it was full of cabbage and broccoli and most of that stuff has come out now. And we replanted it with sweet potatoes, which they're just starting to really perk back up. Um, I think there's about 21 slips that we planted in this bed here. And then right here, we've got a little, uh, what was the name of that squash? It comes from Sean and Beth. Uh, I can't say their last name. I don't know. Daltry? Is that right? It's, like, that's not how you say it. That's not how they say it, but no. yeah. I can't remember. I can't either. What, was the, what is the name of that squash? I could, um, Chomachino. Ch there you go. Chom like Chomachino, I think is how you say it. But anyways, it's some kind of really big, crazy long squash, and we got some seed from them, and I only had one come up, and so I'm hoping that when it starts trellising or starts climbing, it climbs up this fence here and let it just run around the garden fence. But um, anyways, the rest of this bed here is just a few random marigolds. Some of these slips look like they're suffering a little bit, but right there's some new growth coming out, so they're they're coming on with it. And those chamachino squash if you're wondering what we're going to do with them we planted them to save seeds off of to have something to feed to our pigs and chickens that's pretty much yeah they what say they're they, there for they make good livestock food especially for pigs stuff so we'll see i'm sure we won't get enough to feed off of just that one plant but at least we'll have seeds for next year then there's a couple of random uh, 
winter peas there. Then down through here, we've got more sunflowers. These are volunteer sunflowers as well that we just moved and planted on this edge. And then the grapevine that grows along the edge of the fence here. And we've got a couple of random tomato plants planted in this. Now these are planted in nothing, everything right here along this outside edge is nothing but strictly compost. It's had no fertilizer, nothing. It's just compost that we made. And so this one was sort of like a little experiment just to see how good our compost was really without putting anything with it. Um, now, as far as the stuff out in this garden, except for that row of cabbage plants down there, everything else here has had like 10, 10, 10 put by it. However, I have not put a lot of 10, 10 by it. It's just, it's just been like, you know, one quick handful by each plant and that's it. And it gets all the, the leaves and stuff that we amend in with the soil. So that's the main garden there. Now here's our garlic patch, which we've got to go ahead and harvest the rest of this. We've harvested a bunch and it is beautiful. But um, we ended up planting like 10 pounds of garlic for some reason. I don't know why we planted that much. I don't know whose idea that was, Andy. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> but anyways, it's really, it's really done good for us. Now, this has had nothing put by it, no fertilizer or anything. We just kept it mulched and we mixed in some compost when we made these beds. Um, and that's kind of what we're trying to get more towards, y'all, is using more of our own compost and stuff that we can make here instead of spending money on on synthetic fertilizers. So what I've got planted here, I'll show you real quick. I got some cilantro, a few little hills of cilantro. My basil is coming up. Anybody seen a previous video? My first round of basil didn't come up, but pretty sure every bit that I planted this time came up. <laughs> um, that right there is a calendula plant. Um, I planted several of those, but that's the only one that come up. It's a volunteer deal that the deer has been eating. I didn't know deers eat deal, but apparently they do. And this is just kind of a pollinator area of, of flowers that I planted. It's just a variety. So here, y'all, we have our, our other sweet potato bed, and we uh, mulched it with some old junky hay. And uh, they're seeming to do pretty good. They're finally coming out from the deer damage, and uh, they're doing all right. And down here at the end of this bed, we've just got it mulched and everything. We got some comfrey planted around this tree, and we have random plants of comfrey planted everywhere now. That stuff is everywhere. And here was another little experiment we done. This corn here, all we done was tilled up this spot in the yard, added in some compost that we had made, not a lot, but just a little bit, and then uh, ridged up the rows, planted the seed, come back with uh, chicken manure that we just raked up from underneath our chicken house. And I think we've got about two five gallon buckets on all of this of chicken manure and that's it it's had no fertilizer at all other than the chicken manure and the compost and so this is like an experiment of ours just to see if we can grow corn without synthetic fertilizer because corn is such a heavy feeder um and so far it's looking like it's working i don't know we won't know until it actually makes ears but man i tell you it looks good right now and this is honey select sweet corn if, in case you're wondering it is a little bit short out here on this end, but we have a lot of shade coming from that tree and that tree. So I think that's the culprit of that short corn. But so far, everything you see is all right here within a couple steps of our back door. You can see here's the house. So the, we did have a bunch of beautiful strawberry plants across here, but we got a little pesky deer that just keeps coming back. And he got in these strawberries. Um, he even ate on these sunflowers here. Daddy. Then there's a fig tree, and we got a fig tree over here on the end. I miss those. See y'all, at the base of each one of these sunflowers, you may have seen the video a while back, we planted some bean seeds. 
at the base of each one of these sunflowers with the intent of letting them run up the sunflowers. You can eat them all, little man. Look at these strawberries there. Show them. I see that. Over here, and amongst all these old flowers and everything that's come up on their own, we got our brandywine tomato that comes up every single year. I mean, I guess it reseeds itself, but it comes up every single year up here on its own. We never have to replant this thing. Daddy, look how much the bushes grow since I trimmed them. Yeah, they've grown a lot. But we never have to replant that thing, and it always gives us quite a few tomatoes. So that's just something to think about. Plant something somewhere, let it go to seed on its own. You may not ever have to replant it again. Jacob, I see some red up in there. Now we have strawberries here too with the intent that one day this will all be covered in strawberries. Kind of like a ground cover. And this is literally right at the front of our house. These are the front flower beds of our house. You got one? You picked oh, you a dandelion. Oh my! There's a whole lot of them. Oh yeah. Those ain't quite ready yet, Jacob. But if you don't pick them now, something else may get them. That's a, that's a, looks like a pretty good one. I've never, see, I've never seen us grow a strawberry like that. That one done rotted. Now you go lay them in the house and they'll ripen up a little bit more. So yep, yeah, y'all, that's it from right, like right here around our house. I mean, every we've got a ton of food growing just right here right around our house where everything is walking distance easy to maintenance easy to maintain and next we'll go over here and show you the raised beds that are also right right across the driveway from our back porch back at the back porch right here we can literally take just a few steps off of our back porch And if we make a little bit of a detour, we can walk by two cherry trees we have planted out there and check on those. And we walk right over to our raised beds. And this is the youngin's play area, so you're going to see stuff laying everywhere right here. Just such is life. So now the thing with the way we've got these raised beds laid out is every single day we make a round down to our pigs to check, to check their water and feed them. And so the, our raised beds are pretty much in the way of us walking there. So we have to walk by them to check on them. Um, I've also got turkeys in this greenhouse right here that yeah. have to check on. So. so previously in the year, this was an onion bed. And now it's just got dill in it. I've got two tomato plants over here. And we've got zinnias that I sowed in here now just to come up kind of to keep everything covered and have some pollinators because we really don't need this for nothing else right now so these are some of our carrots this is the, we'll start at this raised bed this is some of our carrots we've been harvesting they're all about ready to pull that's a little one <laughs> yeah they're all all of these are a little on the short side there you go jacob you can take those we've got these cattle panels here run from one bed to the other and we've got our green beans growing up in the edge of the beds and once they get big enough to pick, we'll rock right under here and just pick them off. And these are our Kentucky Wonder Beans. So the next bed over, we have these volunteer potatoes that we were talking about earlier in the video. This is part of them. These are French fangerling potatoes, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And they have looked so good this year. They've hardly had any bugs on them. They've done so well. And in all these raised beds here, this is all either compost that we've made or compost that we bought somewhere. We can actually tell the difference in the compost we made and the compost we bought. But, um, so walk down through the tunnel here. We have another trellis with the same Kentucky Wonder Beans growing up them. And another same right here. Back to this bed, we have all of our peppers. We've got hot peppers. We've got sweet peppers all mixed in there together. And this bed is full of broccoli, which is starting to look a little shabby. Yeah, that one. It's time for them. Daddy, getting too it. hot on They want the bolt. Yep. Yeah, that one's ready to pick. There you go. There you go. That's a light-colored zucchini. The rest of them I've been picking off of them were dark. So here's some more of those French fangling potatoes. 
And I mean, just, just look at these. Like I said, this is no fertilizer. This is just compost. Same for our beans here. They're looking so good. But um, we move on down. Around this apple tree here, we've got some more comfrey planted. We've got some mint. We've got another little cherry tomato and uh, some uh, echinacea. Yeah. And then over here in this bed, we've got two zucchini plants and then three, I mean, four squash plants, yellow squash. This is straight neck squash. We don't have none ready right now. We got one right there that's going to be ready soon. Then these right here are bush beans. And these are jade bush beans. And we are getting ready to have beans running out our ears. Look in there. So y'all, this year we normally put, we normally plant a lot more green beans than this. But this year we didn't plant near as many because last year we were making can so many green beans last year that we just planted enough for us to eat on and maybe can one or two batches and we really weren't worried about planting that many this year. We wanted to utilize our space for uh, other yeah, things. For other things. Yeah. So here's Jacob's bed. So Jacob, tell them about your I bed. I got cucumbers planted in here. There's a whole lot of tiny baby ones. And these green beans are already, if you like to pick them and then eat them. Jacob loves some raw baby green beans. Same to me. Oh my goodness, look at this one. <laughs> what kind of green beans you got, Jacob? The, some bush green beans. What kind of cucumbers do you remember? Pickled cucumbers and long cucumbers. I think you just had pickled. So I had, I think I had two long ones and two pickled ones. You might be right. I think we did. That one didn't come up. I think we replaced it. And then he's got his trellis there for his cucumbers to grow up. Daddy built me them. And so this is Jacob's garden. He planted it. He's been taking care of it. Been keeping an eye on it, hadn't you? Kept it watered. And kept it watered. Good job, little man. Right here we have a fruit, uh, a Wait, pear maybe. tree, and uh, we've got a couple of tomato plants planted at the base of it. We got some radishes there. That's, we actually pulled some radishes out of there the other yesterday. We've got a couple of plants of comfrey and some more echinacea. Then right across through this little valley here, we've got all fruit trees. There's peach trees, there's pear trees, and there's mainly apple trees. All different varieties, and uh, we kind of, we call that little area Apple Valley, just because you know it's a little valley, it's full of apple trees. <laughs> well, we'll walk over here next and let Maggie show you her little garden. We've we've gardened all through. I mean, the ten years we've been together, Andy's gardened even before that. And one lesson that we've learned is. You can't take care of your stuff like you should if it's far away from your house. And if you can really take care of your things, you don't have to plant as what? much of it because you're going to get a better harvest most of the time if you're able to really care for it like it should be. So that's kind of our goal this year is, you know, getting the most we can out of a small area. What you got, Maggie? Tell them about your garden. Peas and green beans. Uh-huh. Look at her peas. They're beautiful. They got blue though. Yep, right there's a pea. Peas? Yep. And green beans. So this is Maggie's garden she's been taking care of. She loves peas and green beans, so that's what she decided she wanted planted in her area. Uh-huh. So y'all, something else that the kids have done here as well is we've let them use compost We've let them use chicken manure. We've let them use stuff like that because we're trying to start them off not depending on synthetic fertilizers to grow their food. And that's something that I've sort of had a hard time with because all my life we just always would go throw some fertilizer by it if it didn't look good. Well, yeah, we're tobacco farmers. And too. we were tobacco farmers too. Man, we used the fire out of fertilizers. And uh, it was constantly cultivating and fertilizing all the time. And if you had a pest problem, you sprayed it with something. If you had a something that looked right there was always something you sprayed it with or you added to it or whatever to 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 fix the problem and so not saying that i'm totally against synthetic fertilizer because i'm not because we use them but we're just trying to teach them ways of doing this stuff without having to do that 
part of one of Jacob's homeschool classes one day was me and him. It just happened to be me and him that day because Megan wasn't at home. And we went down here and flipped the compost pile, and was I was teaching him about compost. And in my opinion, that's about as just that's more important than a whole lot of things they teach in school nowadays. And honestly, he's all like about compost now. Like mm -hmm. he talks about it, and he's all about co he, about cover crops and compost. And so I I, I like that because that's going to give him a, a head start. Go and plug it for me. For when he gets started doing it and not necessarily depending on something to throw at it real quick to fix the hey, problem. Jacob. One more quick to, uh, trip over here to what we call the hillside garden. And then we do have two garden spots that are spread out. We've got one that is directly that way across the creek. Can't see it through here, but I mean, it's just right beyond those trees down at the bottom. And then we've got one that's about a half a mile up the road on, some, on another piece of property we own. And that's where we've mostly got field corn and stuff like that. But we'll go down here and check out the hillside garden. And it, is, it as well is in walking distance and something that we have to walk by to go check on our pigs. All right, so now we're walking down our little driveway here that comes on back here around where our pigs are and right past our raised beds. On to the next spot. So y'all, while we're making our daily loop around the place, taking care of things, you know, if we need to, all we have to do is cut right through those apple trees to our pigs, check on stuff like that. Um, but as Megan said earlier, I just don't think you can emphasize enough how important it is to have everything centralized that's in your path every single day to check on it because that way you make yourself check on your stuff and so anything's going wrong you you see it if something needs water you see it if something's got insects you see it if something needs picking you see it believe us y'all we learn the hard way yeah <laughs> and we don't we're trying to save y'all from learning the hard way too. it will burn you out in a hurry having to travel everywhere trying to figure out if you've got tomatoes to pick if you've got squash to pick i mean you have to do that every single day it will burn you out in a hurry and not only that it takes time it takes a lot of time so, anyways, the apple trees are there. Once you get over to this hillside, we started out on this hillside. It was just this this section right here where the berries are was kind of like almost like some bare dirt. It was really, really poor soil. It did have like fescue growing on it. And down below the pig lot was some extremely thick fescue. But I'm assuming it's because all of that runoff from the pig lot was feeding that, that grass there. So what we done to start off with on this hillside was we took and put a net up, an electrified net, and run the pigs out in here the first year. We let them tear this hillside up. Um, and they did. They done it quick, didn't they? Yeah, real quick. <laughs> And, like uh, you come through here with a plow. Yeah, we let them we let them tear it up, and so after that, we got in here, and I was able to get my hands on a ton of wood chips, and so we mulched the whole thing. This was, I think, the second year of it. Actually, mm -hmm. we mulched the whole thing because the first year after they tore it up, it was late in the season, and we sowed a cool season cover crop over the whole thing and just let it go. The next, the following year, I think we turned the pigs in it one more time and let them eat that cover crop up. Yeah, they weren't in there for like a couple of weeks. Yeah, they weren't in there long at all. And then we mulched it. We mulched everything thick. And uh, so now it's been mulched for two years. It's going on two years. Mm -hmm. We mulched it again this spring. So the first, when we first mulched it the first time, we planted the blackberries, we planted the raspberries, we planted these two muscadine vines. We planted a couple of blueberries, and then then we mulched. So we mulched around the plants. And uh, then we come back this spring and put down another good layer of, of uh, wood chips. And so what you see right here is what we've got going on now. We've got, we planted all these strawberries this spring, and these will be the same intent. We hope they end up being like a ground cover and covering up all of this. Um, these raspberries have really come out a lot this year. Then we have Look at that one. It's calling my name. 
Then we have the blue, a blueberry bush here. We have another blueberry bush right up here. And we have, we're going to have more blackberries than we know what to do with. Unless something eats them before we do. We've got some, we got some worms in this one right here though. And they're spreading. But see, stuff like this is what I'm talking about. You know, while I'm out here feeding the pigs or whatever, I can just come over here and do this. And as y'all can see in the background, right there is the house. So we're still not far. And kind of just just take care of your problems while you're out doing your daily chores. Oh, this is actually great. I'd seen it out here earlier and I didn't pick it because it didn't wasn't that big of a spot. But now it's they really no. accelerated here. And we've got a ton of comfrey planted through here. Yep. So we've got a ton more blackberry plants coming on with it too. Look at that shoot. That whole shoot right there has grew this year. This just yeah. just this year. It's crazy. And we've got random strawberry plants planted in this too. Um, then as you step down the hill, we've got our two muscadine vines. Now these cabbage plants here were some that we had extra left over. We just brought them out here, stuck them in the ground, and we kind of thought if they make anything, we'll feed them to the pigs. Um, it don't look too promising that they're going to make anything, so we'll still feed them to the pigs. Then we've planted some random flowers in this hillside. We've got a lot of daff I mean, uh, yeah, daffodils that come up. We've got more blueberries. We've added in a lot of blueberries. Out through here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 12 blueberry plants total out here. No, 13 plants. And we're hoping, you know, that these do good and end up providing us with a whole lot of blueberries. And I've kind of done this with intention here because I used my tractor to mulch this. And I've left wide enough rows between each row of blueberries that I can get in here with the tractor and not have to worry about stepping on these blueberries. But when we're not using it, you know, that's the only time I'm ever in here with a tractor is bringing mulch in and dumping the bucket. When we're not, we intended on planting like some random annuals and stuff like that out here, but we hadn't had to. We don't need the space right now, so we hadn't planted anything. But last year we did that and it worked really good out here. This blueberry bush right here looks the best as far as size. Oh, it's one of the oldest ones. It's too. one of the oldest ones. This one down here's got some big blueberries on it. Those are right. Oh, I forgot about that one. Let's see what the blueberries look like. Those two are right. You ain't gonna eat them? No, you can have them. Thank you. So. Anyways, that pretty much concludes what we've got up here at our house. Now, like I said, we do still have, across the creek, we'll go down there and show you that as soon as we get done eating, which will be like 30 seconds for y'all probably. It's going to be more like 30 minutes to an hour for us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we'll show you that one. We've got sweet corn planted across the creek, and we've got field corn and potatoes planted up here at our other garden spot. I want to add in one thing I love about this area right here is the kids love to ride their four-wheelers. I'm sure you've seen them on other videos on their four-wheelers. But they come down this road right here that goes to our creek. Their favorite thing to do is stop in this area right here, and they'll stop down here and get them a snack as they're going back and forth. And I mean, that is so much better than them going in the cabinet looking for Doritos. Looking for say? Doritos or Little Debbie Cakes or anything like that. Right. But they just think it's so cool that they can stop right here and pick whatever they want. And they'll sit down here and have them a snack. Yeah, so y'all, yeah, that's something good to think about too. Because kids nowadays, and I'm guilty of it myself, and so are our kids. But they're so addicted to those sweets, you just go straight to the cabinet and pick out when they get to looking for a snack. Well, plant something like this just for that reason alone. If you don't do anything else with the berries. If you have something like this where your kids can just run out and pick their own snack, gosh, that's so much better. And then when they, they check the apples every day, it's kind of funny. 
Like they think these apples, I guess, are going to ripen up just instantly. And they go through and check those apples almost every day to see if any of them are red. Even though it's going to be. And we've done told months. them. <laughs> We're gonna take you down to what we call the creek garden. So y'all, this is what we call the creek garden. And it's right here in a creek bottom. The creek's right over there. Um, if you can remember back. Oh, several videos ago we had the little field that was sowed in crimson clover so this is it and now we have serendipity don't put that pen. um sweet corn right there we've got two rows of pink hole i mean a pink eye purple hole crowder my uh, peas there that for whatever reason are just not doing good this year i don't know if it hasn't been hot enough for them or what they're finally starting to grow a little bit this this end right here kind of started to drown but um then in the center we have some honey select sweet corn right here this was the last thing we planted you can barely see it it's just now coming up down through there and it's actually looking a lot better than the other the other the earlier corn we planted so we have a strip right here that is sunflowers and y'all will notice that we have a lot of sunflowers planted and that's because in my opinion they're pretty important because you can use them for chicken feed feeding to your pigs and feeding for your cows it don't matter you can mix it in with any of your feeds and it's a really good source of protein and plus we just like to plant sunflowers they're pretty and the bees love them and the bees love them then this is our first uh honey select that we planted and you can see the size difference at how some of it's really tall and others of it's really short. And I'm not too sure what's going on with it. I mean, I've planted corn in this section of this garden before and I've never really had it do that. So, um, anyways, it's, I don't know, maybe it's the weather that hadn't been right on it or something. And, but I mean, it's, it's, it's growing. I feel like now I was a little worried about it to start with, but I think it's gonna make something for sure. But we, we staggered our planting so it wasn't all coming in at one time. Um, and sweet corn is something we love. And so we wanted to make sure we had a lot of it playing. And I, I, if this turns off like it should, we'll have way more than enough sweet corn to, to do us. May even have a couple, extra, a couple extra years to get rid of. But anyways, this is the creek garden and that's all we have going on down here this year. Last summer we had a bunch of different stuff planted down here and like she said these gardens that are down here I mean they're just far from the house they tend to ne get neglected so corn is a crop that you don't have to check on every single day until it's ready to harvest that's when you need to start looking at it every single day but like i said it's something that we like to plant more of and so we like to come down here and plant it in this bigger space you're curious of how we keep the deer out from down here i'll make sure to link that video too because we are down here in the middle of the woods it is somewhat of a struggle so y'all be sure to check that out and i'll show you our little trick so now we're going to head up to our other uh patch of land up the road here and patch. yeah we got potatoes up there we've got three different patches up there that's planted something we've got potatoes we've got field corn Thank we've got watermelons and we've got some sorghum planted up there so come along with us and you can check that one out Now we're about a half a mile from our house at our potato patch and field corn patch right across the road. So these are the potatoes and uh, they're looking pretty good, but we got some over there towards the road that's starting to get a little wilted. It, it's, we need some rain. It's, look at that. It is dry as a bone here. And uh, you know, we don't have no way of watering this up here, but um. 
deers have been munching on some of these out here on the end. But I want to show y'all something real quick while we're here at the potatoes. So we watched a video the other night. David the Good. David the Good talking about potato seeds. And I never heard of such. Never knew potatoes had seeds. Well, looky here. Craziest thing ever. Like, And it's only just a few of them. You really can teach old dogs new tricks. Look at this. <laughs> we've been, we've both been growing potatoes our entire like lives, and but never, no, never heard of it. None of these white potatoes over here have seeds. I have looked through every single row, and I have not found a seed nowhere. These, right here's one. Going. Yeah, right here. Pretty sure these are the. These are either Yukon Golds or the red ones. The the Nor red Norlands, I think. So I'm not sure which one they are. We'll find out when we dig them, but. So they said the potatoes, right there some more, that the potatoes, when you do them from seed, won't come back. Yep. Crazy, ain't it? They won't come back true to whatever it was you had planted. Said so they could be all kinds of mixed up stuff. So we're going to save these seeds here. and We're going we're gonna to try that, see what we get. Just um, never heard of potato seeds. Never but, knew potatoes had seeds. Just like, look at those, y'all. I mean, they're starting to die back and all, but. Still, they, they just look a little pitiful. They need some water. Look a little sad. And now all of these are um, Kenny Becks. All of these right here are Kenny Becks. All of those from here to the road. Then this road right here, part of them, about half of them is Yukon Gold and half of them is uh, Red Norlands, I think what her name of them. So these are pretty much our eating potatoes. We do sell a few potatoes to some of the local people and so yeah, we don't we don't eat this many potatoes. We eat a lot of potatoes, but this should turn off way more potatoes than what we'll ever eat in the season. But we also like to save our seed potatoes too. Yeah, we do keep a bunch to to plant back. We'll walk over here while we're on this side of the road and show the uh, sorghum patch. Now it's it's needing some rain too. It, it sprouted and came up, and it's since then it's just kind of sitting there. Right after we planted it, we got about three tenths of rain, and uh, it was just enough to make it sprout. And since then, it's just just sitting there. It ain't grown and grown none. Making it's a little bit thicker out here, but it needs some water on it bad. Jacob, don't walk on it. It's, it's, a, it's a little, you can barely see it. It's it's a little on the thick side, which we knew it would be. But y'all, like we said, this is just our first rodeo with this, and we're not out to make a crop of it. We just want to get us some seed stock. And Daddy? What? At least it's been a rain a week. Well, yeah. Sometimes that ain't a good thing when it's been as dry as it has, and then it turns around and turns wet. It just always seems like it messes with the ground. Like it'll, I guarantee, if it if it rains like they say this coming up week, after it dries out, the ground will be hard as a rock. And plus, you've had stuff gone that long without water, and then you throw that much water at it. I've seen a lot of these places in these fields drown too. But we're going to go across the road and check out the cornfield and the watermelon patch and the sunflowers. And then that's it. We'll be done with all the gardens. So, y'all, we're going to start at the top corner of this field. And here's what I'm talking about when you get too much rain and then it's turns off dry the wind has blowed like crazy i've never seen wind blow this year like it has this year look at it this end right here is a lot of red clay now on out into the fields not like this but this red clay sits up like a daggone brick and uh so start off with we've got a patch of sunflowers here that the weeds are starting to take pretty bad <laughs> but there, we don't have no way of really getting the weeds out of it because they're just scattered out through there broadcasted out through there so, and then this is uh, some Hickory King white field corn that uh, I pretty much planted this just to keep seed stock. It's the only reason. And we've got this section down here planted, and that was what you've probably seen in an earlier video of the white 
hickory king and then the jimmy red that we mixed together and we're kind of trying to make a little bit of a land race variety i guess you'd say and see what we can do we're just experimenting with that too just to see what it would do because both corns had traits that we like so we're hoping that we end up getting ears that have both of those traits and if we do we save the seeds from those and plant them again next year so this is planted later than that in theory it may not work we'll, we'll find out but this should be tasseled out and pollinated itself before this is starting to tassel and so hopefully they won't cross that's our plan so then out through here we have more sunflowers on each side of these watermelons so this whole row is watermelons and there's just a few that one right there is starting to come out there he is um, we had to go and replant these because it turned really dry again on them right after we planted them and only just a few of them come up right there's one of the first ones that came up we've got all varieties through here it ain't it ain't one certain variety it's just a few but y'all the weeds are taking this too and this is what we're talking about the stuff that's not right at your house you just kind of time goes on and you kind of forget about it and then you get up here and look at it and you're like oh man i really need to be up here taking care of this but i'm going to let it rain before we actually get in here and work this because the ground is still got a pretty good crust on it so i want to let it soften it up before uh before we actually try to start getting weeds out of this because i can come through here with that cultivating tractor and clean out the middles of the road pretty easy it, and then we'll just have to come back and hoe out between the plants but um so all the way out through where you see the orange flags that's all watermelons then we'll take a walk down in here and these are all sunflowers here you can see everything's needing some water look at that corn how it's twisted up it's thirsty it is thirsty because it's thirsty yep needs some water So out in amongst all this corn, you'll see orange flags scattered here and there. And that's all different varieties of pumpkins and squash. Just some stuff that we had left over, we planted out here. And we'll let those run out in, in amongst the rows of the, of the corn and do their thing. And if they don't make anything, they don't make nothing. If they do, they do. All right, here's a pretty good, I'm pretty sure these were some pumpkins here. I think those were like jack-o'-lantern type pumpkins. They, they're all growing pretty good. Look out there, too. We got, I'm pretty sure these were jack o' lantern type pumpkins, too, that are right here at these flags. Then we planted some, what else did we plant up here, Megan? It's mainly pumpkins. There was some cherry tan pumpkins. Did. And then jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. I was going to say cherry purple. Oh, and we planted some butternut squash, too. So these may be butternuts. I really don't remember what we planted where. We had some Cherokee tan pumpkins that we saved seeds from that are most likely cross-pollinated with something else. So it's going to be interesting to see if they make what they make. They'll be crossed with another pumpkin. Cause They'll be crossed with pumpkins and squash yeah. and who knows what because we had them planted all on top of each other. But, y'all, we don't, don't matter. We just want to see what, as long as they make something. That's all that matters. Now this this particular one right here come up on its own. There was a volunteer. And look at how well it's doing, y'all. I want to tell you something. We've been doing a lot of this here land race gardening research. And if you don't know what that means, it's when you let a bunch of different varieties cross up with each other. They all get traits from each other. And so they'll... Uh, they'll in, in 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 the end do better in your conditions your soil and whatever well last year the, the squash and stuff that we had growing up here it done all right but it wasn't nothing to brag about it never looked like this so this is one that came up like i said from seed that would that was just left here from last year and so i'm going to assume it's probably cross-pollinated with something but and if nothing it, else we can feed it to the pigs that's right we'll do something with them they'll it'll make something to eat it just you don't know what it's going to be 
And there's an awesome book about land race gardening. I can't remember who the author is right off the top of my head, but I'll be able, I'll be sure to put y'all a link to that book that Andy's been reading. Um, I think he's learned quite a bit, and it's a very interesting concept as far as land race gardening. It really is, and it goes back to showing stuff about how our forefathers done it generations ago. They didn't worry so much about keeping a certain variety of seed the same and true it didn't matter about that. It was mattered about how it performed in your conditions, without fertilizer, without pest control, just with the weather, with the weather, everything. So it's it's really interesting. We'll have to link that and let y'all look it up because I I've enjoyed it so far. These sunflowers is coming through here. All of this come up on their own. And I want to say something real quick about that. That's one reason I do not break my fields. And when I say break, I mean take like a, a turning plow and roll the soil over. Because when you do that, you bury those seeds. And when now it helps with weed seeds. Because you bury them so deep that they won't come up. But at the same time, you don't get all this volunteer stuff that comes up on your own either. Because it's buried. It can't come up. And I, I truly enjoy... The stuff that comes up on its own. I think that's one of our funnest things of gardening. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. When we see stuff that comes up on its own, and we're like, "All right, you know." For those of you that are new, for those of you that are new to the channel, we actually have a cucumber plant down in what we call the creek garden. Um, there's a cucumber plant down there somewhere, yeah, right? I'm pretty sure. I've well, seen I mean, amongst that corn, other. that's year three. Yep. On that volunteer cucumber reseeding itself, and then we have these beautiful brandywine tomato plants in the front that we. Yeah, forgot. I showed them that earlier oh, did in the you? video while you were inside. Uh, we have these beautiful brandywine tomatoes, and this is year three for them reseeding themselves too. So me and Andy have talked about, it, and I think actually from those brandywine tomatoes, we want to save seeds from this year because there's something. Apparently, those are strong seeds that like our environment because we literally do nothing. We know nothing to yeah. them, and they do excellent. And that's something else about that cucumber she's talking about. It looks like no other cucumber. I mean, when they start coming in, we'll, we'll have to show y'all. But it's crossed, you know. It's, I mean, I eat them. Oh, yeah, and they're you said good. they're good, right? Yeah. But they're, they look like no other variety of cucumber you've ever seen. It almost looks like a, a mixture between a pickling cucumber and a straight eight, I think, yeah. is what they look like. And it's probably what it's crossed with. But they come up every year on their own. The ones that we had volunteer come up in the garden right beside the house, um, there's a couple in there, and they'll be the same way. They look the same. They have that same look to them, and uh, we just let them do their thing, and they make good cucumbers, and it's like they require very little care because we just let them do it. But we've got more squash or, honestly, pumpkins. I don't know what they are down through here. We've planted so many different types. I don't remember what we got. But so this is our field corn, and... Come later in the year, I'll have to say that this, this patch doesn't look as good as it did last year. But we've had some really, really messed up weather on it this time. It started out extremely cold. It's been dry. And when we do get rain, it's like we get it all at once, and then it turns extremely dry again. I've I never seen weather pattern like what we've had this year. And this is our first hot day we've had. And here it is, middle of June. And... Y'all, it's, it's been nice weather as far as temperature goes. Garden ain't like it too much. Not, well, some of them have and some of them ain't. Yeah. Seems like up there at the house is like it pretty good. But these other ones out in the field here, for whatever reason, they ain't like this weather we've had. So this is pretty much it. Y'all will see us picking this on up in the fall. And uh, hopefully we got some interesting looking corn that comes out of this, being that it's the Jimmy Red and the... Uh, um, Hickory King mixed together. I, honestly, picking corn is one of my most favorite things because it's like unwrapping Christmas presents. You know, just to pull that shuck back and see what you got. Well, y'all, we appreciate y'all watching today. We apologize for this video being so long. We just had a lot to show y'all, and I hope y'all enjoyed this garden tour. I hope it inspired you. I really hope it inspired you that you can do this and you can grow your own food especially that stuff up there at the house you know most of our vegetables are at the house things like this right here you know the field corn you don't have to have this it does help us out because we have the land to do it but well it's something fun that yes. mainly i like to pull with yes yeah. so that's what we, we want to be an encouragement to you today you know our ancestors did this this runs in every one of our 
veins, you know, this blood to be able to do this right here. And anyways, till we catch you on the next one. And there's, there's one more thing that I would like to mention about all this is these big field gardens here, you know, a lot of people talk about in, our, in the comments about how much work it must take to put into all those gardens. And yeah, we do put time into it and everything, but when we got these field gardens, we can use that, that cultivating tractor, that farm on, and you can make quick work of what would take you with a regular hoe all day to do. So, you know, it's, it's, it, and it's something fun that both of us enjoy doing. We like to get out here with it and mess with it. And I love to ride that tractor. So it's just more or less leisure than it is work, really. But anyways. Till we see you on the next one. Have a good one, y'all. Thanks for watching.